If you want to be a scientist, you got to get some research experience. I'll show you how to find a lab, who to get in touch with, and what to say to get a position as a research assistant. I'll also tell you how to make the most out of being an RA and why it's the best thing you can do for your grad school application. I'll be talking from my experience as an RA and hiring and training RAs in psychology and neuroscience, but this applies to science degrees in general and even clinical psych in med school. You probably don't know exactly what kind of research you want to do yet. That's normal. Lab experience will help you figure that out. If you're lucky, you might have a professor or a TA who does cool research. If they're a professor, they probably run a lab. If they're a TA, they probably work in a lab. And in both cases, they might be looking for research assistants or know somebody who is. Even if they haven't brought up their research in class, stop by their office hours. Most of them love talking about their research. That's usually their main job anyway. They just teach because they have to. You'll also want to check your department's website to see what the rest of the labs are working on. For example, here's the psych department at UCLA. Find the list of faculty members. Here it's easy to find. Other websites look different. It might be under a tab called People. The faculty page usually says a little about their research. Let's say we're interested in this guy. How do interactions between brain regions modulate fear, anxiety, and related behaviors? Sounds cool. We can click their name for more details. Here we can see they use electrophysiology, optogenetics, calcium imaging. Maybe you already know you want to learn those skills. Maybe you've never heard of them. That's fine too. If this is a research topic you want to get into, they'll teach you how this stuff works. That's what lab experience is for. So if you're interested, see if there's a link to their lab website. It might say the name of their lab or something like this, learn more about our research. Sometimes there's a specific application process for undergrad research assistants. Here they have a join tab and a section just for undergrads who want to get involved. But if there's no formal application, like at this lab, don't worry. You can just email the researchers directly. And this is worth doing even if there is a formal application process. Do both. The lab website should have a tab called People or Members or something. Here's the lab director, but you'll also see grad students and postdocs, and they're usually the ones who need research assistance. If you submit an application, they might not see it right away, and when they do, you're just another applicant in the spreadsheet. But if you email them directly and show them you're a real person and you're motivated, you'll have a better chance of getting in. You can usually find their specific research interests on the lab website or on the grad student section of the department website. This lab gives everybody's email address. Some labs don't, so you might have to get creative. The department's website might have a directory of all the grad students. If not, you can see if they're in your university email system, type their name in the to field and see if they pop up. Then repeat, keep looking through the faculty page for any labs that seem interesting and write down the contact info for the lab directors, grad students, and postdocs whose work interests you. When you first reach out, you want to keep your email short and to the point. These are busy people, and if you write them a novel, they might not get around to reading it. You just want to express your enthusiasm about their work and ask if they're hiring any research assistants. But first, take a closer look at each person's research. There's usually a publications tab on the lab website with copies of papers they've published. You can also look them up on Google Scholar or your library's article database. Read at least some of the abstracts from recent papers to see what specific questions they're working on and what methods they're using. If a grad student or postdoc is an author, especially the first author on a paper you find interesting, mention that work in your email. Keep it simple. I'm a psych student, I've read your work on whatever topic, and I'd like to work on a project like that. Are you looking for research assistance? That's all you need. It doesn't hurt to say a little about your motivations and your goals, as long as you don't ramble on about it. There'll be plenty of time to talk about that later with them once you're in the lab. Write a separate email like this to each person on your list. If you send one email to the entire lab, you get what's called diffusion of responsibility, where nobody responds because everybody thinks someone else will respond. And if you send individual emails, you can personalize them for each lab member. That shows that you've really checked out their work and you're serious about getting involved in it. If you don't hear back for a couple weeks, it's not bad manners to email them again. They're probably busy and they might have just missed your email. Try to find a few different labs to reach out to, especially if you're at a big university. There might be a lot of students applying for positions, and some labs just don't need much help from undergrads. But if you reach out by email, you can start a conversation, learn more about their research that way, and when a spot opens up, you'll be first on the list. They might have you do an interview, but it's probably nothing to worry about. 
it's usually more of a chance for you to interview them, especially if you're looking at more than one lab. So what could you ask them to make sure this is the right lab for you? That brings me to my last point, how to get the most out of your lab experience. You want to have a symbiotic relationship with the lab. They need help with some lab stuff, you need research experience. You'll probably start out doing basic stuff, like entering data into spreadsheets or counting how many times a rat scratches itself in a video. Some labs just need this type of help for one semester, then they don't need you anymore. That's not ideal. So start by asking, what research skills can I learn in your lab? You want to find a lab where there's room to move up. A lab where, if you do the basic stuff well, you'll be able to take on more responsibility like running the lab equipment, putting electrodes on people, working with biological tissue. That'll be great for your resume, and it'll help you get a strong letter of recommendation for grad school. But the best thing you can do is run your own study. That might sound hard, but the lab gives you a lot to work with. If you're in the lab for a while, you'll learn their specialized methods. Maybe they run cognitive tests on children. Maybe they put dyes on rat brains to look for certain substances. Whatever it is, you'll see what kinds of questions they can answer with those methods. The baby lab will see how different things affect baby cognition. The rat lab will see how different drugs change brain chemistry. In lab meetings, you'll see that there's a logical progression to what question they'll ask next. And after a while in the lab, you'll naturally start to have your own questions. I wonder if cell phone games make kids smarter or dumber. I wonder if this drug binds to dopamine receptors. Your supervisor can help you develop your ideas if they're willing to. Most labs are, especially if they have a lot of undergrad research assistants. They might do this all the time. So that's something worth asking about, either at the interview or in your email exchange after you get a reply. If I'm active in the lab for a while, could I eventually run my own study? If you're in the honors program, ask if you can do it as an honors thesis or capstone project. That'll help you structure your project step by step. It also can help you get funding from a grant to pay for equipment or participants, or even a salary stipend for you so you can focus on research instead of working a job. But funding should be available whether you're in the honors program or not. If you're not sure about the honors program or where to apply for funding, ask your academic advisor. An honors thesis or a research grant gives you another level of experience with designing your research, writing it up, and presenting it, applying for a grant, which is a major skill in academia, and all of that looks great on your resume. Even if you don't run your own original study, you might still have a chance to present research at a conference or even be an author on a scientific journal article. So ask the lab director if other undergrads in the lab have been to conferences or contributed to papers. And if not, ask if they'd be open to the possibility once you prove yourself. Some labs take a bunch of undergrads to conferences every year, I got to go to Seattle, Chicago, San Francisco, all in undergrad. These were super fun, great food. Some guy tried to sell me pills outside my hotel in San Francisco. And you really start to feel like a part of the scientific community. If the lab director says yes to these questions, that's a great sign. It means you can really get involved in the research, which will give you a better idea of what you'd like to do or not do in your career. You'll also hear about the research other labs are doing, and that might help you decide where to apply for grad school. The grad school application process is very similar. You're not so much applying to a school as you're applying to work in a specific lab and be trained by a specific expert in the field. It's never too early to start reaching out to the people who run the labs you might want to work in in grad school. Ask what they're looking for in a grad student so you can build the right skills while you're still an undergrad. Ask if they'll be taking grad students in whenever it is you plan to apply. And generally, just start the conversation. Build a relationship to get your foot in the door so when it comes time to apply, they're already familiar with you and maybe they like you. So research experience will give you a much better idea of what opportunities are out there and what it might be like to be a grad student. While you're at it, you'll build a bunch of skills for your resume, you'll get strong letters of recommendation, and you'll start to get a sense of direction that can only come from research experience, and that'll help you write the essays for your grad school application. So, recap. You can find labs on the faculty page of the department's website or by asking your professors and TAs about their research. Email the lab directors, grad students, and postdocs whose work sounds interesting, and keep your emails short and to the point. I'm interested in your work. Are you looking for RAs? Follow up email if you don't hear back in a couple weeks. Look for a lab with opportunities to move up, present at a conference, and run your own study. You can learn more from that than all your classes put together. The lab is where you really start to become a scientist. So have fun.
It's very exciting. And if you have other questions about getting lab experience or applying to grad school, make a comment. Hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and good luck.